Sorry. I'm ready. So, how do you guys know MTV? And like now and today, the kind of shows it has on right now. Um, it's basically reality television now, but it used to be primarily just music. Um, and just so you know, like for credibility wise, like, you know, I did a lot of research on the subject and I watched like some of the original music videos that they actually did. Um, for my actual topic, it's uh, how MTV got started in its early years and its impact on culture. And um, today, I just want to share with you what I learned about uh, the early history of MTV and the prehistory and about the music videos and how it impacted society. So, how it got started. This is just a, um, the original concept for the theme, uh, for the original like, picture that they were going to have like, as the logo. It was going to be Lance Armstrong, and it was going to be him, like, that's supposed to be Lance Armstrong. But it's, he's, it was the, there was going to be a catchphrase, and he was going to say um, uh, that, like, uh, the eagle has landed, which is what Lance, uh, Lance Armstrong said. And Lance Armstrong actually said, I don't want anything to do with this, and you're not allowed to use my um, image in any way or anything that I said. So MTV actually went with a different concept. Um, how it got started is that they wanted a um, they wanted a programming that they could do for low cost that they could showcase videos to try and get different artists' music across. And it was created by Robert W. Pittman, and the company that he was actually representing was the Warner Amex Satellite Entertainment Company. And it was developed for the channel after extensive market research. They uh, went through different processes of, um, you know, going through uh, surveying teens and what they would like to watch and what kind of music videos that they would like to see. And this is just pretty much what I just said. Like I said, I put too much information. Um, so what they did originally is they had what was called VJs. Now a lot of people know what a DJ is, a disc jockey, and a disc jockey is usually someone who's on radio, and they pretty much talk about the song, they introduce it, they give you a little bit of information on it, and they show the, um, they play the song. What the VJs did was that they introduced the video, and they, they talked about the video a little bit, and then afterwards, on certain occasions, they actually had interviews with some of the artists. Um, the first video that was shown on MTV was called um, Video Killed the Radio Star. And before that premiered, it, uh, like I said before, how they wanted to do the Lance Armstrong theme originally, this time they had to go with a new theme, and what they said was, ladies and gentlemen, rock and roll, and that was on August 1st, 1981. So, then that's the picture of the original BJ's. It was uh, all five of them. That's what they looked like back then. They're pretty cool. Yeah. Um, okay. And this is the image of the first music video, which was Video Kill the Radio Star. It was hard to get a clear image because obviously that's how things looked back then. Things like that. Okay. So next let me tell you about MTV's early years, which really had the most profound effect on society, which is from 1981 to 1985. The second video that came out was Pat Benatar's You Better Run. And it was released on August of 1981, and it really helped um, pave the way for uh, female soul artists to get to play music, because before then, she was the second um, overall artist that, that, that had a video on there. But she was really, after that, because um, she was kind of like more edgy. And after that, it kind of paved the way for more edgy artists to get their music across. And they, um, she set the bar for that, that music video. And then also, there was uh, Michael Jackson's Billie Jean video. And that was the first time that you had a, such a, like a big hit from an artist that actually people, like, before that, it, it, what they said is they broke the color barrier. 
and before then, a very few black artists actually were able to have their music videos shown on MTV. Some of them were Donna Summer, and, uh, Eddie Grant, and Tina Turner, but nothing like Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson set the bar because they were under scrutiny because they were saying, why aren't you showing like any African Americans? It's predominantly white people. And so they came back and they said, you know, we were wrong, and they showed the Michael Jackson video, and everyone liked it. And so that's just, that set the bar, and that led to things like, uh, for uh, African American artists down the road. It actually let artists such as Lionel Richie, who everyone knows is famous, he got a lot of fame from um, his video Hello, which debuted in 1984, and that wouldn't have been able to happen had Michael Jackson uh, not been shown in his video. Then, what this image is, it's the first ever MTV Music Awards. And this is where Madonna performed her song, Like a Virgin. And what happened was, this got rid of the bubblegum image that a lot of female artists had at the time. A lot of them were shown to be kind of like the straightforward, good, good, goody two-shoe kind of girls. But she, you know, obviously um, broke the barriers by doing a lot of provocative things. And um, she rolled around the floor, is what she's doing right now. And she's, uh, you know, being very controversial. And it, it raised a lot of controversy for the time. But because of that, a lot of female artists were able to branch out and expand their image. Finally, I want to talk about um, a couple other major things that MTV did. And the effects it had on pop culture. I guess a bit. Yeah. Um, they had live concerts actually taped for in 1985 um, in for in London and Philadelphia. They had 16-hour coverage, which was more than any other place at that time. It was ABC who was running coverage on it, but they would only do like a minute or two clips, the highlights, and. Um, they actually helped promote. Um, they helped promote their um, the coverage for the film, uh, for the music video, and that helped raise money for uh, people in Ethiopia. And then this is the Spring Break. This is another thing that they did was Spring Break, and they were the first people to actually film Spring Break, which everyone knows, you know, teenage, well, you know, kids like to go down to Spring Break and they get to party and stuff like that. They were the first people to actually film it. More info. And it was filmed in uh, Daytona Beach, Florida. And then I just want to say one more um, interesting fact. Um, and that is that originally, and this was actually the guy who produced the first music video, who was in it the, from the Buggles, that was the band from the video for the radio star. He was in an interview and he said that MTV actually didn't originally get to be broadcasted everywhere in the US, only in certain places. And one of the places that it didn't get broadcasted was New York. So I thought that was interesting because you know New York's supposed to be kind of the most liberal of place, one of the most liberal places, but they actually said we don't want to show MTV. And because of that, uh, they didn't actually show it until MTV started getting more famous. It was only on certain broadcasting channels. Uh, so, in closing, I just use my citations. In closing, MTV accomplished a lot during the first five years that was in production. It broke color barriers, it helped musicians' careers, and rocketed them um, to stardom. While today, MTV um, may be more, uh, is, is mostly orientated towards reality television and stuff like that, uh, it still has a huge place in the history book for. Um, setting the bar for uh, artists everywhere and accomplishing many things across the nation helping people. That's it.